Gentlemen, I have been empowered to execute the law here as I see fit. Brook no interference, is that clear? Questions? What about the Cartwrights? Damn the Cartwrights. Let's go. <laughs> What do you think, Jacob? Short-handed as we are, be hard pressed to round up all those horses before the bad weather sets in. Ah, uh, we got a chance. If we put in some long days. I don't know about you, Bronk, but I sure am hungry. Hey, Bronk, Jacob. Evening, Josh. Hello, Josh. Five o'clock is dinner time. Half the time nobody shows up. Remember, they do show up there late. How much trouble is cooking for this bunch trying to keep things warm? What is that, Buckshot? At five o'clock, it was meatloaf. <laughs> not bad. Not bad? What do you mean, not bad? I bet you a dollar you can't do as good. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay, it's all yours. You know, I've been thinking, what do you suggest I do about that offer? Are you asking my advice? Yeah, you're my sister. Who else am I gonna ask? <sighs> Benj, I don't know. I mean, what about your idea of setting up a small law practice here? I know. I guess just a question of what I want to do with my life, Sarah. I mean, we are talking about one of the biggest law firms on the East Coast. I have to consider it seriously. What about the family? <laughs> no! Supper's getting cold! Just any colder, I'm gonna throw it away. <laughs> We're coming, Buckshot. Yeah, we'll do it, yeah. Can you hold this, please? That's pretty good shooting, brother. Not bad. Who won? I, I did. did. <laughs> Isn't A.C. coming, Cypher? No, I haven't seen him all day. Well, he rode off late this afternoon to fix that crowd down on the south side. Hmm. It's not like A.C. to miss supper. Well, I think A.C. has other things on his mind besides eating. Kara to see you. Papa's due back any minute now. He just went to make special arrangements for a train for us. Our plans have all changed. We're leaving Sunday night. Sunday? Yes. He has a meeting with the President and the Secretary of Interior on Friday. We have to leave. It would be so much fun. 
Now, you and AC's got three days to get those line shacks stocked. I've given orders to the winter line riders to move out first thing Monday morning. And we're going to set up base camp at Cane Lake. You boys get your work done, you can meet us there. We've got a thousand head of horses to round up and deliver to the Army by the end of the month. So we do have our work cut out for us. I want to move out at first light. You're not talking about tomorrow, are you, Bronk? Yes, sir. Me and Josh are going fishing tomorrow. That's right, we tied a whole bunch of new trout flies. Thought we'd try to coax old Mo out of that, that deep hole in the forks. <laughs> old Mo will have to wait. We've got a lot of work to do and not much time to get it done. Yes, sir. Bronk, you know, Annie's leaving next week, so why don't you let me take AC's place? AC only has a few more days to spend with Annie. Bronk, I can do it. I can ride as well as any of you. Miss Sarah, this is no job for a lady. Come on, Bronk, not being fair to AC. You'll give me your answer then? Promise? Promise. Noon tomorrow, our meadow. That's a thousand years until then. Adam. I don't want you to go. Send somebody else. Let AC be with him. Are you questioning my orders, Benj? Well, in this case, yes, I am. Don't do it again. You live so long you don't remember anything you've ever felt about being young and in love? Benj, maybe someday you'll find out just how dumb that question was. Our visitors normally use the front door, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, sir. Perhaps you can explain to me what you were doing jumping off the balcony. Well, I came to see Annie, Mr. Stewart. I've asked her to marry me. Ah, I see. Well, times have obviously changed. When I was a boy, we asked the young lady's father for permission first. I'm sorry. I must tell you... Annie's happiness means everything to me, Adam, as it should to you. I love her very much. She loves you. Therein lies our dilemma. Dilemma? Annie is gifted with a God-given talent that is meant to be shared with the world. A genius that belongs to the world, not just to you, nor to me. Do you understand? I think I do. Let me ask you, Adam. Do you love Annie? Truly, do you love Annie? Yes, sir. And you must be man enough to let her go. I don't know much about poetry. But what I've heard, I've liked. Would you like to hear one of my favorites, Josh? I'd be pleased. Um, this is by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. She wrote this poem for her husband. Oh, I like it, too. Her mother loved this poem. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach. When feeling out of sight for the ends of being and ideal grace. I wish I could write like that. Mm. That's beautiful. 
Hey, see, you're back. Hey. Hey. What's wrong? Nothing. Did you see Annie? What did she say? We've been waiting on you, AC. What's wrong? I don't feel much like talking. Yeah, maybe I should go talk to him. I don't think so, Bench. Remember sweet Betsy from Pike, crossed the great mountain with her lover Ike, with two yoke of oxen, a big yellow dog, all Shanghai rooster and one spotted hog. Oh, dang fiddly, dang fiddly, dang fiddly day, dang fiddly. Hey, see what's the matter? You ain't said a thing since we left. I'm sorry, I just got a lot on my mind. Ah, look at this view though. Mmm, isn't it something? Ponderosa. Thousand square miles of the most beautiful country in the world to call our home. To have Burning AC, we've got to be luckiest guys alive. Mmm. My, my. What is it, AC? I saw somebody in the trees over there. I don't see nobody. What do he look like? Man on a horse. Just seemed to vanish. Maybe it was just shadows. Maybe you saw a ghost. Who? <laughs> sure. He's trying to help, cousin. Oh, do you remember sweet Betsy from Pike? Crossed the great river with her lover, Ike. Well, here we go. We got this one and the shack up at Bear Tooth Pass today. And then uh, them two tomorrow at Copper Basin. We're still gonna have to go like something to make it, AC. That will do. You're going to Europe? Annie wants to get married in Paris. We'll live there so she can study music. You mean you're gonna leave the Ponderosa? Yeah. picked out the site where I want to build my house. If I ever find a woman that'll have me. I uh, wish you could see it, AC. Right on a hilltop. Dang, you see forever. The mountain, lake. Dad burn it. I was hoping that we could all be a family. Me, you, Benj, and Sarah. Live out our lives here. Raise our kids. You know what I mean? I don't know, Josh. Ponderosa just doesn't mean as much to me as it does to you. I guess I just want to go my own way, be my own man. Well, you go away, and I'm sure as heck gonna miss you.
Josh, I hate to ask you this, but... Ask. I need a favor. Anything. Sure you don't mind doing this alone? Nah, don't worry about it. I'll take care of the line socket bear tooth pass. Meet your copper basin in the morning. All right, I owe you. Right, get out of here. Have fun. You sure? Get out of here, Dad Burner. I'm tired of looking at you. All right. Say hi to Annie for you. Burn it. Well, if Ben's rounds up those strays, we can call it a pretty good day's work, Brunk. Yeah. We'll set up base camp over yonder under them big trees, right on the point. Uh -huh. yeah, I wonder what's happened to Benj. He should have been here by now. Oh, you know how he is. Pretty independent how he does things. Takes his own time. He'll be along. I don't know what I'm doing wrong with these boys, Jacob. There's something missing. Missing? Yeah, Ben Cartwright kept his sons together as a family. They worked together. And by God, they really loved the Ponderosa. Well, different generation, bro. Different values, I guess. thinking of leaving us, are you? Oh, Buckshot, I don't know. I love it here, but Boston is where I spent most of my life. I do miss it. All my friends are there. And the only friend I have here is Annie, and next week she'll be gone. She sure turned out to be a pretty thing. Seems like just yesterday you and her was running around freckles and pigtails. Did you ever hear her play? Once. Me and A.C. went to San Francisco. It was outside on a stage in a big symphony orchestra behind her. You know, they're saying she's a musical genius. She sure brought tears to my eyes. Did you know she's going to play for the president at the White House? For Teddy? President Roosevelt. Yeah, Teddy. Teddy? <laughs> Any of your thoughts? I was just thinking about something Josh said this morning. He's right, you know. This is the most beautiful place on earth. Maybe I am gonna miss it. Just wait till you see our house in Paris. Adam, it's beautiful. It's right on the tip of Ile Saint Louis, overlooking the Seine in Notre Dame. We're going to be so happy there. Yeah. I'm just afraid you don't know how much I love you. I'm sorry for intruding. Truly, I am. 
but I sorely need your help. Well, he's about a mile up ahead, sir. Or bad. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Let's put an end to it. Is that really Frank James, the famous outlaw, Jesse James's brother? Yeah, he says he's a friend of Bronx. Rode with him in the Civil War. Adam, he and his brother are legends. Look, go. I'll take care of him, and I'll see you as soon as I can, okay? You sure you'll be all right? Sure. Go. Okay. Bushwhacked me last night just before dark. And they were set up waiting for me when I crossed out of the Ponderosa. They've been chasing after me ever since. Why are they after you? You still wanted by the law? No, no, no. After Jesse was killed, I paid my debt. I stood trial three times, acquitted each time. All the charges against me have been dropped. Why are the Pinkertons after you? One man, Charlie Seringo. To him, it's personal. The law don't count. Now, son, I thank you. But as best you leave me, you clear on out of here because they can't be too far behind me. You said that right. Here they are. Well, well, well. After all these years, Seringo's finally gonna get his chance to kill me. No, he's not. Not on the Ponderosa. You don't know who you're dealing with, son. Gentlemen, I'm Adam Cartwright, Jr. My family owns a Ponderosa. Mr. Ketchum, disarm the prisoner, put him on his horse, and be quick about it. Oh, wait, can't we just talk this over first? Stand aside, young man. I'm sorry, I can't. I said stand aside. I heard you the first time, but I'm sorry, I can't. I just can't do that. I'm sorry. I warn you, you're obstructing justice. Justice? What do you mean by justice? Are you gonna shoot him again? No, sir. I'm gonna hang him. <laughs> no, you're not. Who's gonna stop us? You? I don't see anybody else, do you? You see, gentlemen, like I said, on this land, those railroad badges of yours, they don't mean much. In fact, I hate to tell you this, they don't mean a damn thing. Legally, you're trespassing. <laughs> Mr. Cole Mr. Seringo Handcuff this insolent little pup With pleasure, sir And then Teach him a lesson he won't soon forget <laughs> oh, 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 wait a minute I got a better idea Why don't you let me take Frank here to the hospital And you take your thugs off the Ponderosa What do you say, hmm? You move that hand again I will blow his head off you realize how much trouble you're getting into, boy? I don't do well when I'm in trouble. It makes me nervous. And when I get nervous, my finger twitches. It's an involuntary reaction. I can't stop it. And in case you're interested, there's a hair trigger on this gun. Just so we don't have any accidents, why don't you tell your playmates to throw down their weapons on the ground now? You're bluffing. I wouldn't bet on that, Seringo. But if there's any doubt in your mind, I'm not. No, 
All right, gentlemen, do as he says. Throw down your weapons. And the rifles. Don't forget the rifles, gentlemen. Do it. And the automatic, Charlie. Fancy. A gift from Mr. Pinkerton for services rendered. I've carried it for more than 20 years. You're the first beside myself to put a hand on it. Really? How come? Because I'd kill anyone else who touched it. Well, I guess I should be scared to death then. Yes, you should. Is that what you intend to do, Mr. Seringo? Not only kill Frank James, but kill me as well? You're gonna be one busy boy. Now ride out of here and keep riding till you're off the Ponderosa. Enjoy the moment, Mr. James, you and your young friend here. You won't get out of here alive, that I promise you. Let's go. Not bad, son. Not bad. Frank James, the outlaw? Yes, he's been shot. He just appeared out of nowhere. We did what we could for his wound, but... Well, who shot him? I don't know. And we have to go back up there. Well, Miss Sarah, I'm not sure that's such a good idea. We can't leave AC alone with a wounded man. He needs help. Yeah, maybe you're right. Besides, it'd make a heck of a good story from a newspaper. Let's go. No. Buckshot, this is news. I can't just ignore it. Want to get your head blown off, Finster? Annie... Them fellows that your father saw riding past your place last night, did he tell you what they looked like? Did, did he tell you whether they were wearing dusters or suits? Yes, they were. Why? <coughs> Pinkertons! What, the National Detective Agency? Yes, this is all planned. That's why they're here. To get Frank James. Buckshot, what are you talking about? What is going on? Frank's here because of Bronk. Maybe me. See, we was together. Me and Bronk, Frank and Jesse, we fought out of Texas in the Civil War. You? Well, I, I wasn't always an old man. Track him and find him. Yes, sir. Thank you, James. You're a dead man. War was over. We rode out of Texas into Missouri to surrender. Charlie Seringo was there with the Union boys. None of them hardly old enough to shave on either side. Jesse was 16. He carried the white flag for us. And I heard that Yankee officer give the order and the Union troops started shooting and they mowed us down like we was nothing. Saw Jesse take a bullet. I got hit. Still carrying the Yankee lead in my leg. Wasn't for Bronk, I wouldn't be here. He got me out. I'll tell you, we were the lucky ones that day. We have to do something to help. Will you come with us? No, Annie, and neither will you. We just get in the way and probably get themselves killed worrying about us. Buckshot's right. The thing to do is to get the sheriff. I was surprised to see that old log house was still there. We used to play in it when we were kids. Mm. Yep. Grandfather put it up solid like a fort. It's the first place the Cartwrights built when they came to the Ponderosa. I remember. We used to call it the old homestead house. Yeah, that's where it all began, Bench. Yeah, it's a shame it's been let to go to ruin like that.
хуже, а? Trouble, bro. Give me a hand with him. Frank? Hello, Bronk. It's been a while. Yeah, it has. Let's get him off here. Ringo come after us, Jesse and me, from the time we come home from the war, Bronk. He wouldn't let up on us. He was the youngest detective in the agency, and he was bound he was going to make a name for himself. You know how bad things got during the fight. Both sides, Union people and us, we did terrible things. No quarter asked, no given. Women, children, killed. Old folks, people's homes burned. Things I don't like to remember. None of us do, Frank. We were bitter. We were guerrilla fighters. We hated the Yankees, and the Yankees hated us. But even after we surrendered, things didn't get any better. Yankees declared us outlaws. Not soldiers from a defeated army, but outlaws. So, Seringo hunted us, Jesse and me. He ran my blood kin off their farms. He surrounded my mother's house and blew her arm off with a bomb. Killed my nine-year-old brother. I heard. Okay. I'm gonna have to cauterize that wound. AC, grab a hold of him. Gentlemen, thank you just the same. Let's just do it. It's gonna hurt you now. I know. Let's get on with it and not be jawing about it all night. Okay. you enjoying that, did I? Well, that's the most fun I've had today. Yeah. Thanks. Ponderosa's always been a safe haven for people in trouble. I think AC did the right thing. I think he did, too. But if we give Frank sanctuary on the Ponderosa, it'll be dangerous for all of us. We'll be putting our life on the line. Can we go to the law? And what about Sheriff Russ? Out here against Sarango, he hasn't got a chance. Those men with him are professional gunmen, hired killers. They don't give a damn about the law. And if we do this thing, we're on our own. Now, I can decide for myself, but I can't decide for you three. How can you be sure? Because I know him. We fight fire with fire, Benjo, we forget it. We just let him go off alone? They'll hunt him down and kill him? That's exactly what they'll do. For my dead body. And mine. Jacob. Bronk, you know where I stand. Benj? Yeah, I'm with you. This is the plan. Now, me and Jacob will take Frank down to the sheriff's office in Virginia City. Then you two can head up to Copper Basin and get Josh. All them Pinkertons run around with their guns. I don't want him up there by himself. Right. Now, you go back to the house and wait for us there. And keep your eyes open if you run into any of Serengo's gunmen. Give them a wide berth. Don't worry. And good luck. Be a hundred men in these trees. We'll never see them until they were right on us. I don't like it. Think I do? Keep your eyes open and quit bitching. Bitching? Who's bitching? You are. I'm not bitching. I'm nervous. 
I'm nervous I tend to talk a lot. What's that? What? Over there, something moved. See? You're seeing things. There's nothing there. I'm not seeing things. There's something there. Look. You're right. There's something there. Go see what it is. I'll cover you. You'll cover me? You ever shoot that thing? Of course I've shot it. I'm a good shot. Go on. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Come on. These are the pack horses Josh had with them, aren't they? Yeah. Where's Josh? Look over here. I don't see anything. Looks like Josh met up with two horsemen here, and they rode off in that direction. How can you tell? See these tracks here and there? See the way they go? You can barely see them. Where'd you learn to do that? Out back, Australia. When I was a kid, an old Aborigine hunter taught me. He could trace a dingo dog for miles across bedrock. Think the Pinkertons got him? Could have been anybody. I thought for years about coming to see you. Ain't many of us left rode with Captain Quantrill. You know that he was only 28 years old when the Yankees killed him. Yeah. I guess we were all the youngins in them days. I don't look back on those years with too much pleasure, Frank. What were you doing over in California? Visiting my uncle. He's got himself a big ranch there at Paso Robles. I run into a buckaroo friend of yours there, Tom Mix. You remember him? Sure. Last time I saw Tom, he was just a boy. Rode line for us years ago. That's when I first come to the Ponderosa. Mm -hmm. How's he doing? Oh, all right, I guess. Wanted me to throw in with him. Making something called moving pictures. <laughs> the whole business sounded pretty silly to me. New century, new time, Frank. The life we lived is no longer possible. Mm -hmm. Bronco, ain't no way out of here. Picking has got every trail blocked. Can we get out through the canyon? Not in the shape he's in. Can you ride, Frank? Where to? Back to Cane Lake. We'll take shelter the first night in the old Cartwright house. That's our only out. Are uh, you sure you can ride? I have to, don't I? Yeah. Sure, I hate getting old, Bronco. Ah, you ain't old. You're wounded. Come on. Mm -hmm. Okay, boys. Stop right there. <laughs> Mr. Seringo wants to see you. Well, Mr. Cartwright, we meet again. And you, sir, who are you? My name is Benjamin Cartwright. That's right. And who are you? I'm Charles Seringo, Chief Detective Pinkerton Agency. I'm a lawyer, Mr. Seringo, and I demand to know why you put handcuffs on my cousin. Well, sir, I don't uh, care who you are, what you are, nor do I give a good damn about what you demand. You are here alive on my orders. Now, I believe we have some business to discuss. You okay, Josh? Yeah. Yeah, just a mite hungry is all. Let's get down to it, shall we? These are my terms. We'll make a trade. You give me Frank James, and I'll give you Josh Cartwright. Frank's gone. 
We don't know where he is. Gentlemen, it is now noon, exactly. I give you 24 hours. If I don't have Frank James by noon tomorrow, I'll hang young Mr. Cartwright here in his place. Where do you want to make this trade? Here we'll do. Noon tomorrow, then. Mr. Cole, show our guest the door. Oh, one more thing. If you try anything heroic or attempt something foolish, I promise I'll blow his head clean off. Gentlemen. There's Pinkerton guns on every trail. They're swarming all over the mountain. But I think I found a way. Down that canyon. Probably helped Brock and Jacob got out. They didn't get out. They doubled back to King Lake. Come on, let's go. Hey, got gotcha. Josh. What'd you stop for? I said... Dance! That's enough. Well, we was just funning with him a little, Mr. Syringo. No harm done. Take the cuffs off of him, bring him to me. No, sir. Whiskey. I don't drink. Well, I know that you're hungry. How about some food? Please, be my guest. You're sure? Tell me, is it uh, Josh or Joshua? Josh. And what Cartwright son did you spawn from? Haas. They called my father Haas. You bear a strong resemblance. You're the bastard child. Yes, sir. I had an acquaintance with your grandfather, Ben Cartwright, years ago. It was a brief acquaintance. I can understand why your acquaintance with my grandfather was brief. He was a hard-headed man, stubborn. It was not a friendly encounter. As I recall, it was a dispute over Bronk Evans. He wanted to kill me. It's a pity he didn't. You know, Josh, years ago, I made up a list of the men that I thought most evil. I've scratched every name off that list but one. And until I scratched that last singular name off that list, Frank James, well, I just don't feel that my life would have been justified. That's why you're doing all this? It's as simple as that, my young friend. I'm not your friend. Well, anyway, I'm gonna hang Frank James here tomorrow. My family's not gonna let that happen, Mr. Seringo. Well, then you and your family are all going to die. How are you gonna explain that? Simple enough. Frank James, a known and dangerous killer, went berserk. 
And before I can get to him to save you, he wiped out the entire Cartwright family. You think anybody will believe that? Oh my Josh, who would possibly question my word on what happened here? Ben Cartwright. Maybe you picked the wrong man. Bronx wife? Yep. Didn't know he ever had a wife. He ain't spoke about it since the day it happened. When did it happen? That's the day I'll never forget as long as I live. I mean, me was trying to finish building this house before the baby came that fall. Rena came out of tent that morning all dressed to go to town. She kissed Bronx. Said she'd be back before dark. That was the last time we ever saw her alive. How was she killed? The board gang was in town to hit the bank that morning. Seringo and his men were just lying in the wait. Karina was just coming out of general store across the street. Witnesses said that Seringo wheeled around, didn't hesitate, shot her in the back. What Bronk do? Went plumb crazy. Didn't care about anything. All he wanted to do was find Seringo and kill him. Why didn't he? Your grandfather. Ben liked Brock, took him in, comforted him. Talked to him for days. Made him stop thinking about killing. Then he hired him as his foreman. Gave him a fresh start in life. The other night, you asked him if he remembered ever being young and in love. Benj, he never forgot. Wake Frank, I got a plan. Just before first light, while they're all still asleep, you boys head down to their camp, get Josh, and get out fast. Is that clear? Yeah. Let's go. Now, when you go to get Josh, you're going to stir up a hornet's nest. So cover your trail, make sure you're not being followed, and get back here. Right. Good luck. That was a while ago. My son's grown now, and I'm real proud of him. He's a good man. I do love my family, Bronk. I never had a family of my own. I always wanted one, but Serengo took that away from me. How's that? He killed my wife, Corina. Sorry, Bronk. I haven't mentioned that name aloud in many years. When Ben Cartwright died and left me the responsibility of running the Ponderosa, all the kids come back. I says to myself, Bronk, this is your family. Be a father to them. And how you doing? Not too good. Not too good. Anything happens to this family, Frank, I don't know what I'll do. Seringo suckered us. Held us here. Wasted three hours in those woods just looking at this. Yeah, well, he's smart. Yeah, so are we. They're riding horses. They have to leave tracks. Let's go.
Amen. Sure, I'd like to go with you. Right? Who, who, who? Uh, you better let me go up and check it out by myself. It, you might not cotton to have a newspaper man around. Welcome, Sheriff. You have no authority on this property. Here's my authority. Stay in the woods and off the trails. They've got men posted everywhere. Right. When you get to the canyon, stay on the west side in the shadows. Understand? And if you get through, telegraph the U.S. Marshal in Carson City. You tell him what happened here, okay? Good luck, Fenster. We're counting on you. Thanks. I'm gonna need it. Skin us alive, he gets away. Let's get him. Shooting at him from here. Where'd they go? Down there, towards the river. 
can't be far behind him. We're not. Here's one. Oh. Say, that's pretty nifty. Yeah. How'd you do that? <laughs> practice. Years of diligent practice. Hmm. Yeah, help me off with this boot. Yeah. Sure. Uh. Uh. My wife knitted these socks for me. I had to talk like a Dutch uncle to get her to leave the holes for the toes. She didn't understand the principles of ventilation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that feels good. Man. <laughs> I don't know why. It didn't used to feel that good. Just because I'm older, huh? What's the matter, Josh? You cold? No, no, I'm fine. Really, I'm just hungry as all get out. Oh, well, here. In the bag, help yourself. Something wrong? What is it? Yeah, it's running vittles. Bacon pot of pong, bacon, beans. The old days, we'd cook up a batch any chance we could. Enough to last for days. That way, if you were on the run and you couldn't light a fire, you'd have something to put in your belly. You eat this? Sure. <laughs> it gets cold or soggy or stale. But if it ain't gone too ripe, it'll keep a man going. Ain't much of a life getting out while, is it? Oh, it ain't too bad. If you're young, you don't mind eating some dust or... Frying in the sun or riding for days with soaking clothes when you're riding in the rain or sleeping on the cold, hard ground under a wet blanket. Or if you get sick, pneumonia, worse, toothache. Toothaches are the killers. That's the worst. Mm. But if you can put up with that, it ain't a bad life. We best get moving, Josh. Them pinkin' and boys ain't too far away. Well, how you know that? I can hear him. I can't hear a thing. You make a damn poor outlaw. Let's go. Here. Put this on. How far is that line shack? Up a copper basin about four or five miles. Carry out two of us. This horse won't last too long. Him and me is both gonna need a rest. We'll hold up there for a while. Looks like we lost them. They're out there. Come on. We got them now. Yeah. You two stay here and keep an eye on them. I'll ride and tell Seringo. I got a better idea. <laughs> Seringo ain't gonna like it. Why not? We'll get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know they're dead? <laughs> a cabin was blowed all to hell, Mr. Seringo. <laughs> Nobody could have got out of there. Right, fellas? That's right, Mr. Seringo. He's dead all right. Him and that Cartwright boy. And this here's his horse, Mr. Seringo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're wrong. 
Frank James is not dead. He's alive and I can feel it and we're gonna fight him right now. You all right? You hear him? I don't hear anything except those birds. Horses. Yeah, now I hear him. What do we do? Can't outrun him. Looking for? It sure is. Good to see you, Josh. Glad to be here, Bronk. You found him under a rock. I wasn't under a rock. I was behind it. Looked to me like you were under it. Dad, burn it. You ever consider there's a strong possibility there's something really wrong with you two? Who? Us? Not us. Use a bath. <laughs> you all right, Bronk? I am now. Thank you. Least we could do. Should have seen it, Josh. Huh? Blood all over the place. Yeah. Everywhere. And then Jacob, he reached in, he took this big old knife right out. It was red hot right out of the yeah, fire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he took it and he placed it right on his skin, and you could hear it smoldering on his skin. Mm. Made me sick. Make you sick? It was horrible. And that noise. Oh, that noise. That hmm. noise that Frank made. Huh? It was, it was like, uh, it was like... <coughs> no, 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 it was like... <coughs> well, I'm just glad he's all right. Look, Jack. U.S. Marshal's on his way with a posse from Carson City. And they'll be here before noon. We're to wait here for him. When were they to make the exchange, Frank James for Josh? Noon, why? They won't do it. They'll fight. Annie, I need your horse. It's faster than mine. Take it. Hey, well, where do you think you're going? Join them. A gunfight's no place for a lady. Fuck shot, they're my family. Wait. You ain't going alone. Sarah, tell them I'll have dinner ready. Five o'clock sharp. Seringo, I hear you. It's a trick, Bronk. You can try and flank us. Yeah, I can see that. Bench! You're surrounded, Bronk. Give us Frank James and we'll let you and your people ride out of here alive. You want Frank James, Serengo? You come and get him. Bronk. If I ride out of here, they'll follow me. Don't even think about it. Send them out, Bronk, or I'll drag your whole bunch out like they were rabbits. I'm waiting for my answer. You heard it! 
Fire! Am I glad to see you? Sarah, what are you doing here? On the cart right. What are we waiting for? Patience, Mr. Ketchum. We'll allow them to spend their ammunition, and when Luke and the rest of the boys get back, we'll finish it. Your hat. It's my favorite hat. Do you know how long I've had that hat? You got the hat you bought last year in Virginia City? No, before Virginia City. I bought this in New York. Huh. I love this hat. Ron, you think they'll rush us? I don't know. They should have come at us by now. Must be waiting for something. What gun is that? One of them new auto loaders. Mean. You can say that again. Very mean. Dad, burn it. I ain't hit a thing I aimed at yet. That's because you're nearsighted. I ain't nearsighted. It's this gun. Don't shoot straight. Josh, you can't see past the nose on your face and you know it. Where are those glasses Sarah bought you? Here in my pocket. Put them on. Nope. He's just too vain to wear them, is all. Make me look like an old school teacher. Put them on, Josh. No. Dang. If you don't put them on, you can't see to shoot. And if you can't see to shoot, we're dead. There, are you too happy now? Ha! He's right, you know. Looks like an old school teacher. Can you see? Like an eagle. That old boy is starting to get on my damn nerves. Yep. Where's Luke and the rest of our boys? Shouldn't they be here by now? Yes, yes, go.
That's all the rifle ammo we got left? Yep. Yeah, Bronk. Right there. I'm gonna stop bleeding for a while. Thanks. I don't have any more cartridges left, do you? No. Mm -mm. What do we do? I don't know. One of them just rode in fast. The rest of them won't be far behind. U.S. Marshals got Chief Detective Pete Morgan out of our Chicago office with him, Mr. Seringo. They're fixing to come up here and arrest you. The rest of the boys, they, they all laid out. Anybody got any ideas? Well, if we had some rocks, we could stone them to death. Stone them? Hell, a handful of Buckshot's biscuits could do more damage. You thinking what I'm thinking? How many rounds you got, Frank? I got two. I got five. Let's do it. Serengo! What do you want, Mr. Evans? He wants to make out his will. Shut up. <laughs> Hold your fire. We're coming out. What's going on? I'll take this to mean you're calling me out. This ain't their fight, Serengo. It's ours. How's that arthritis, Frank? I understand that it's a painful disease and that sometimes you can hardly bend your finger. <laughs> Is that true? Let's find out. What are we waiting for? Yeah, I second that. You stay out of this. You kill my wife, Seringo.
You waited a long time for this, Brock. Get it over with. Don't do it, Brock. He ain't worth it. You listen to him, Bronk. He's right. He ain't worth it. Mr. Seringo. I'm Captain T.J. Fox, U.S. Marshal. Of course, you know Detective Morgan here? Charlie, the agency warned you about doing this. You and your men are under arrest. We'll treat your wounds and escort you back to Virginia City. This incident was Mr. Seringo's personal vendetta. You have my apologies, gentlemen. Understood. Thank you. Frank James? You just keep looking over your shoulder. One of these days, I'll be there. Don't wait too long. Bronk, you had me worried, huh? Thought you were gonna kill him. Yeah, I thought I would, too. Why didn't you? But I got better things to do. My father spent his life running away from the Ponderosa. He never had a real home or a family. Until all this happened, I didn't realize how much this place meant to me. Being here, being a part of this family. Did you say that to Annie? Yeah. She, um... She wants us to live in Paris. But she said, if I didn't want to leave the Ponderosa, she would give up everything and stay here with me. She loves you, son. I love her. I don't know what to do. You'll do what your heart tells you to do, son. You know, love is a strange, wonderful thing. I had a wife a very long time ago. And her love was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. As long as I live, I'll never forget her. She taught me the greatest thing anyone could ever learn in life, AC. She said, when you're in love, I mean, when you're really in love, you'll do anything. You'll sacrifice anything for their happiness. Oh, there's a few rough spots along the way, but not very many.
I'll be here. I'll wait for you. I love you. I love you. So you got yourself shot again, huh, Frank? I did. I surely did. Bill's character. Fuck <laughs> shot. That hurts. <laughs> Mr. James. If we didn't get much of a chance to talk, you might not know this, but uh, I'm a newspaper man. Ah, oh, so you're looking for a, a yarn to tell your newspaper readers, Mr. Fenster? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Well, truth be known, there's not much to talk about. Oh, no need to be modest, Mr. James. You be coming to town tomorrow? I am, I am. I'm going to see the doc, have these bandages changed. Well, after you've seen him, perhaps we could talk. Sure thing. I'll buy you a sarsaparilla. Maybe two. I'd appreciate that. Now, right, gentlemen. Good night. Sarsaparilla? You're losing it, Frank. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> Have mercy, will you please? <laughs> here without any ceremony Josh your family thought you ought to have this to replace the one you lost <laughs> well, don't you want to try it on see if it fits yeah I sure oh my <laughs> Oh, very stylish. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're at the dinner table, son. Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. oh, my. It's nice to have the family back together again, isn't it? Right. <laughs> oh, yes. Ain't it? <laughs> Dad, burn it. <laughs> 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 